Um, do you have notes? Do you have notes for I, this? I don't have any handwritten notes, but I have a website up on my telev- on my oh, screen. So you, so you looked at 1991 Wikipedia. 91. <laughs> research. Is that what that we was picked? the year you said? That was the year you said you typed. Perfect. You t- Jesus, man, <laughs> I said nothing. You didn't do anything. <laughs> no, I did a lot. <laughs> yeah, you opened up a web browser. Way to go. <laughs> What else am I supposed to do? I don't know. I have some notes. That's I have, I have like notes on each movie title that I was thinking of talking about. And I have the same you in have, my head. You, okay, so you have someone else's list in your mind. <laughs> and that's someone else. We call it research, but it's Wikipedia. You know what you can tell on most podcasts when they're doing like a movie? They're like, interesting fact. Or did you know they're just going through the IMDb facts <laughs> list? Because you'll hear them... Because you, you can follow along, like it's a text type. Oh, and you could uh, just really just read along with them. Yeah. That's amazing. I've noticed this on a couple of podcasts, and I think I'm going to hear it on today's. <laughs> this one. Hey, everyone ever, and welcome to 20th Century Popcast, the show where we try to understand the present while living in the past. My name is Tim Blevins. If you're not hearing the voice of Bob Canning today, you're about to turn this off because here on the show today is... Bob Canning! Hey, you're back. Hey! Hey, that segue was great. (laughs) You sound wonderful. Both people who listen are here. So, no, it's uh, it's been a while. It's been almost a month since you've been on the show. And I think it's it's been more than a month since since we recorded. It is crazy, if you want to elaborate on that. Well, we've been doing this for over a year now, and it just feels weird to go a week without doing it. So, I felt strange and i guess it's because i was on vacation and i was away from my home um but uh it's it's great to be talking to you again on online here online in the heat of the summer because that's where we are um yes a bit. i think we're by the time this airs we're what two weeks <clears throat> into the summer and i'm feeling it today um how hot about, is it there i know god fuck it. once again we're radio. We're just bad radio. It's a theme <laughs> because we're talking about the thing that everyone can look up on their telephone, the weather. It's one but of I'm, the worst pieces of conversation in the world. I hate that I talk about it at my job. And I really I'm, hate it that I'm sitting here with with headphones talking in the microphone about it as if I'm, it's news. I'm, I'm truly, honestly interested in knowing how hot <clears throat> it is because I understand I that you are going through a heat wave in, in Boston area. Well, we are, and that would be fine because if at the most it's going to hit ninety. But 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 the the point is here recording like the computer gets hot. Normally I shut all the windows; they are open, so you're probably going to hear kids screeching because it's the summertime, and mm. apparently they slaughter children in my neighborhood. But I had to turn all the fans off, turn all the fans off, so it's warm. I'm feeling uncomfortable. I was wearing jeans; they were uncomfortable, so they're mm. off. And it's just I don't know; it's just hot and sticky here, and I feel gross. And I feel like in terms of starting a show, this 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 is not the best way to do it well but it's, it's the way that we're going it's a good it's a good indicator of summer the heat and I, you know what i enjoy doing and in fact still do with my kids when it gets pretty hot out and i'm not sure what i want to do we don't want to go to the park and play it's too hot for that you don't want to walk around the mall because that involves walking uh you know what we do we go to the movies and we sit <laughs> really? down in the air-conditioned movie theater the Summertime Segway, brought to you by Bob Canning at 90 Degree Heat. <laughs> something we're going to do today, um, something we're doing today, it's a repeat of what we did last year. We're going to be talking about a particular summer of the 20th century, kind of the start and finish of that year, what was coming out, and, and what we may have uh, experienced in that period of time. Because I think, um, and you picked the year this time, you picked a year. What was the year that you picked for this big summer movie session that will be that we're rec- in the midst of recording? Yeah, I picked the, the summer of 1991, um, and that was a pretty random choice. Uh, when you asked what, what year uh, we wanted to do, I thought about how... You know, we talked about the 80s quite a bit, um, and we talked about our college years quite a bit. So I wanted to pick a year kind of in between those two things where we're past our, our kind of childhood of the 80s. We're starting to mature. High schools, uh, we're, I think we're in high school in 91, um, but we're not yet in college. We haven't met yet, so 91 popped out. I guess summer movies start in May. That's, you know, now they sure. start in April, as Infinity War did this yeah. year. But, but, but starting in May... 
I was looking at, when I was looking at the list of things coming out, um, May 17th, a movie hit, which I remember seeing in the theater. And I do feel like this kind of kicked off the summer because I saw it, you know, we saw it as a, as, as a whole family. Um, May 17th was the release of the Richard Dreyfus, Julia Haggerty, redheaded kid from Dick Tracy and Bill Murray vehicle. Uh, what about Bob? Question mark. Do yeah. you know this? You know this, I, Bob? You I must. People must have do. loved to tell you this movie oh existed. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, that was, you know, that's the, the sort of the brunt that the Bobs have to deal with when there's a What About Bob movie. Uh, especially if you haven't seen What About Bob. Oh, you had it. You, not, you did it. Not, not at that summer. Not that year. I had no interest in it. Um, I liked Bill Murray. And I okay, let's let let me start over. I did have some interest in it. I do like Bill Murray, and I knew who Richard Dreyfus was. I enjoyed Richard Dreyfus, um, but then the joke started coming, and I just sort of lost interest in it. As as petty as that sounds, but you know, sixteen, seventeen year old kid just didn't didn't want to see it after that. All the what about Bob jokes. I don't think that's petty. I think that's how I feel about so much pop culture in a way. You've got people telling you, in this case, jokes, I guess, but you got the world treating the pop culture as that, as pop culture, as conversation, as wording, as an excuse for a conversation. Before you get to see the actual piece, of course, that would ruin it for you. That happens all the time. I think if we went through past episodes, we would see Radiohead, we would see ER, we would see Jaws, we would see that this is a theme. And I'm, I mean, I'm thrilled to hear you say that because it's not a theme I ever, I don't, I really put on you that much. Yeah, I don't know if it happens all that often with me, but I mean, maybe I just don't talk about it as much. But yeah, this this definitely happened here. Have it's, you ever have you seen the movie since? Have you gone years this later, like four or five years later? Um, we start. I I did start to watch it. I want to. I want you to talk about it first. I don't want to because it, it was your first movie that summer. Um, did you enjoy it? Was it worth seeing in the theater? Yeah, this was just one of those films similar to anything by Chevy Chase in the eighties. My memory is that we saw it as a family, and my memory is that I thought it was funny. And beyond that, though, I, it's not a Bill Murray movie I'd go back to. It's not the one I feel people mention. A few years later, it would be Groundhog Day, which we also right. saw as a family. And that one kind of has more of an impact, I think, with people. But yeah, it was perfectly funny, perfectly entertaining. Didn't have my name in it, so I was fine with that. <laughs> but you, what, what, when you finally went to see it, what, what did you think of it? Um, I didn't care for it. Uh, it's, it's one of those kind of jokes one of those setups that i don't necessarily like and maybe i might be misremembering it but um because i only saw it that one time where i started to watch it i didn't finish it um but it's just i don't like those kind of comedies where nobody else can see the the reality of the situation where one person is is annoyed by another and everyone else wants to give him a chance and they don't just see that, you know, he seriously has a point here. This shouldn't be happening to him. Um, if I'm remembering, it's like uh, Bill Murray's Bob follows Richard Dreyfus' therapist to his summer home or something. And it's just... It's stocky. It's yeah. a bit of a... It's Cape Fear, maybe? Yeah. So it's that's just not the kind of comedy and setups that I like. Um, and, I mean, I there's some I could probably find as passable um, and find the humor in it. Uh, but this just rubbed me the wrong way. And it didn't help again that I was coming to it with all these bad jokes about the title um, in its wake. So no, it I never It's weird that it was a family. It. No, it's weird that it's a family movie. Now thinking about that, thinking that the plot is this mentally unstable man follows his therapist's family to the middle of nowhere on their vacation and won't leave. I mean, that's that's kind of an unhealthy setup, but it was funny at the time. <laughs> yeah. And I think we side with Bob at the time. Sorry. But yeah, I don't I don't know if this comedy would be made as a family comedy today. I don't know. And it seems to be a theme with a lot of Bill Murray's characters. When you look back on them, there is always something a little off and disturbing about them or off and almost abusive. Like he's abusing the, the, the client uh, patient uh, therapist, you know, boundaries. Yeah. And it could be very frightening behavior, and he's just accepted into this family. And it turns out bad for Richard Dreyfuss's character. He doesn't. And he makes it through the movie, but not with his sanity. So it's it's a weird, it's yeah, it's a weird weighted comedy. Which, if we're set on talking about it, I think is a good segue to what followed 
the next week, <laughs> May 24th, mm -hmm. another oddly weighted comedy, one that I was so thrilled for, one that I remember the commercials for. I remember wanting to see this movie, and I also remember the world's reaction within minutes of the release of Hudson Hawk. What was the world's reaction, and how did you hear the, the world react uh, moments after it was released? Well, in 1991, Bruce Willis was huge. Like, he had Die Hard, he had Die Hard 2. You know, he was coming off of years later after Moonlighting, but he was a pretty big star. His name was really building for itself. And this was a comedy that he had co-wrote. Mm -hmm. This was a comedy he was he came up with a story with. He gets to sing in it. It's Bruce Willis playing this character type, you know, the, the cool con man type. Isn't this going to be great? And the world hated this movie. They did, didn't the world they? they world, and the world loved hating this movie. This is one of those movies that was deemed from its release as a bomb. Howard the Duck was a turkey. This is a bomb. These were the words, <laughs> the lingo that Entertainment Weekly dealt with. And that's the thing. I didn't see this movie in the theater. It was rated R. I didn't get to it. But I read Entertainment Weekly. I read Premiere Magazine. I watched Entertainment Tonight. I got the buzz on good authority that Hudson Hawk was a problematic film and that people hated it. And it quickly became an immediate punchline. It took the place of Ishtar before it as being just a bad vanity project, an overblown budgeted project. And the project that for about three years silenced Bruce Willis. Well, there you go. And when you finally did get to see it, as as uh, as I eventually got to see it, what were your what were your thoughts? Well, I was excited to see it because I wanted to see how bad yeah. is this bad movie. And when I saw it, I actually loved it. I liked it too. Yeah. I loved this movie when I saw it. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was clever. I thought it was exciting. But more than that, I think I was cultivating a personality. That was like, I like cult movie. I love movies. I can see what makes a bad movie good. So I don't mm. fully trust my reaction to loving Hudson Hawk because I kind of wanted to be the person who could say, no, and, and I love Hudson Hawk, you know, and interject that in the conversation. And I think this was one of the first times of something because I loved Howard the Duck when it came out and it never struck me that that was a bad movie. I just thought people were wrong in their assessment of 1986 Howard the Duck, which I'll connect in the show notes. I did a whole live commentary to that nobody listened to on this very show. But Hudson Hawk, I remember thinking I'm going to like the unlikable and I'm going to get what people didn't get. And, and I'm also going to revel in this joke of Hudson Hawk. So it's not, I don't know if it's a realistic reaction to this movie like what did you think of it like what were your I, thoughts I very of it? much i very much enjoyed hutchinson hawk I, f I felt like um like i too i didn't go to it with the weight of of all the baggage of, of negative press because though i was aware of it it didn't really stick with me when i finally did get to see it and i just enjoyed it it's it's like you say it's this exciting con comedy there's twists and turns and and uh stings and and, and Sandra Bernhardt and Sandra was the first Bernhard, thing I really ever Andy saw Sandra McDowell. Bernhardt in. Um, yeah, it's uh, – I've always enjoyed it. I've always wished people would give it a second chance. And maybe since <clears throat> you don't trust your memory of it, of your reaction to it, maybe this is something we can go back and watch together sometime um, and talk about and, and see how we feel today. Because I feel like maybe my reaction is, you know, a 17, 18-year-old who – <laughs> maybe isn't as cultured as those people who thought this was a terrible movie, uh, finding it to be a, a very enjoyable camp, silly, fun action movie. Well, you that's know? the thing. It can go either way. Like, I think people may have gone to the extreme of saying it was as bad as they said it was bad. But you're right. This might be a 17-year-old's movie. Right. In addition to Hudson Hawk... This very day of May 24th, another movie hit the screen. A movie that actually I have never seen. Ooh. But a movie that I know and knew at the time, at, 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 at however old we were in 1991. I didn't yeah. stop to do that math. I knew this movie was important. Mm. You know, I, I knew this movie had something to say because, again, I was reading Entertainment Weekly. I was reading Premiere. I was, I, I was watching Entertainment Tonight. And all those sources informed to me that there was a gender imbalance in Hollywood, that strong female characters were hard to come by, and that finally a, actually, male director brought this to the big screen in the form of a film that I hope you've seen and have something to say because I have not seen and I feel horrible about Thelma and Louise. 
Thelma and Louise. I, I did not see it um, the summer of 1991, but I have seen it. What do you think of it? What's your, what's your thoughts? Do you remember it coming out? Do you remember it being uh, I, a big deal? I remember it being a big deal. I remember it being a movie that I never thought I would ever see because I wasn't the type of person to go see female-led movies uh, at that really? time. Really? That was your thought at that time? Well, it wasn't like I was specifically thinking, I'm not going to go see a female-led movie. But I was thinking, oh, there's five movies out and one of them is led by two females. I'm going to go see Hudson Hawk or I'm going to go see Backdraft um, or I'm going to go see something else. Um, that That's kind of how Did you see any of those movies? In the um, not, in the, not in the theater, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just looking at what else was released that day. <clears throat> was Backdraft um, also released this Backdraft day? Backdraft was released that day as well. And there's I'm one sorry. other movie on here that... That I, I have a, a quaint memory of that we'll, we'll say a quick thing about. But Thelma and Louise, obviously, as a white male, don't necessarily have the same uh, feelings that other people do about the movie. Um, I only saw oh, wait, wait, one. Wait, Bob and I record this on different coasts. You're white now? Yeah. I have not been Prob- in the sun for a while. Probably going to edit that part out. That was yeah, not as funny as I thought out. as I leaned into the microphone. <laughs> That's embarrassing. But – uh, no, I enjoyed the movie for what it for what it was. It's a tale of of uh, women taking things into their own hands, and uh, um, I've only seen it once. Maybe that's another one we should go back to, or, or see. Period. Because I or, oh, that's right, it, you haven't but, seen it, and that's the that's a weird thing because this movie clearly impacted me, but I didn't see it. So I guess the press of this movie made me aware of something culturally that was important. And I think it made a lot of people aware of this. And I think that was the discussion at the time, both in the movie. These are two characters from what I understand who kind of take control of their destiny in a world that's against them. But also it was a film. Yeah. That was presenting two characters that I think while not actively sexist, clearly, you know, we're both raised, we're raised in the eighties at, at an era where we were st- probably struggling with that. And I feel like I, I tested the boundaries of that a lot and I crossed the boundaries a lot, but I still probably was relegated to where are my male action stars. I don't know entirely about that, by the way, there were, pl- I think comic books were an example of where there were very strong female characters that I adored, but mm. the conversation about this movie got, at least got mine again, what were we 16? I guess we're 16 and 91, 15, 15 year old mind got the gears turning a little bit that there are issues involving an uneven, wildly misshapen, wildly, perversely jagged playing ground between male and female genders. And and this movie, I think, was – the discussion of this movie was a big deal to that. And I'm happy that that existed. I also think it made it too big for me to approach because it was, in my mind, a psychological and sociological comment. And like a lot of dramas, like a lot of powerful movies and a lot of movies that have stood the test of time – I was never in the video store just thinking, what am I looking for tonight? And grabbing that. Right, it, right. I think it seemed, and that's an excuse. I should see it if I want to see it. And I should make a point to see it. And I haven't, but I do think it was a daunting film at the time for the right reasons. And I'm glad to have at least followed the press enough to get my mind thinking. And I should probably see the movie to, to thank it. But uh, what, what what was the other movie released this day that you were going to mention? Um, do you know the movie Only the Lonely is that a John Candy movie? It is a John Candy movie. Is that an Ali Sheedy movie? The Ali Sheedy is in that as well. I, I Did just you see wanted, this movie? I, I was just you know going through this list. Yes, I have seen the movie. Um, I rented this movie. I think it was it was either senior year of high school or uh, soon you know early years of college. I rented it. I was renting a lot of movies. In fact, I worked at a video store for a while. And I rented a lot of movies during the summer. It must have been college. And I remember watching this movie alone in the basement of my house, you know, uh, and just – I haven't seen it since. It was just that one time. And, like, this was just one of those, like, little movies that I didn't think anybody else knew. Um, and it just – I kind of forgot about it. That's really all I wanted to say is that I'm just now being reminded of this movie, Only the Lonely. I really liked it at the time. I kind of felt like I was that lonely John Car- Candy character with the uh, overbearing mother and the, the very nice lady giving him attention. And, and uh, I, I, I kind of want to see it now that I've been reminded of it. I haven't seen it since. 
I have no interest in this film, but it's great. Totally glad, fine. I'm, totally fine. I'm glad you saw it. It's it's not it's not a comedy then. Is it a, a somewhat it's more like serious a, film? Is it a John more Hughes serious film? film? Yeah, it's a John uh Chris John Columbus. Candy, but okay. Director of the movie Rent and also Home Alone. And two <laughs> Harry Potter movies. Yes. Uh, only one of those is something that I've seen. I've seen the movie Rent. I have not seen the Harry oh. Potter movies or Home Alone. Home, you haven't seen Home Alone? I have not, no. I've seen the John Candy scene, actually, to connect it to what you're talking about. But that's okay. about it. And I know All the right. plot, basically. Sure. It's basically the plot of Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, right? That's what I understand, yeah. Yeah, so I, I know Home Alone. I just haven't seen it. But uh, something I have seen. Well, we've got a Christmas episode planned for you, then. Oh, I hope it's Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, because that's the one I've seen. I'd rather not see the first one if I can keep that going. That's the biggest comedy of all time, or at least was for a while. It ousted Ghostbusters. Wow. Yeah. That might be why I didn't see it. <laughs> I could see that. You did see it? Or you no, could I could see, see that you, that you would it. not see Home Alone because it ousted Ghostbusters. But did you saw Go Home Alone. You saw Home Alone. Yeah, I saw Home and Alone you, in the theater. And you saw Only the Lonely? Yeah, the I saw Only in the Lonely... At home. Alone. alone. You saw it only lonely. Did you see this next one? Once again, segues. I did see uh, the next one. That I, we're going to mention? Uh-huh. I'm, what is this? Coming I'm, into the month of June. Hot June. I'm got. It's got to be that you're going to talk about, and I did see this in the theater, and I can't remember if I saw it with my mom or with my friends on the Friday nights, uh, but you're going to talk about City Slickers next, aren't you? Oh. I mean, we can. What were you going to do? Uh, I was going to talk about the Christina Applegate starring Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Uh, but we can talk about City Slickers because that's one I've, I've, I've seen more. I've seen City Slickers more often. Yes. We could talk about it. <clears throat> so you're, you're bullshitting we, me. You weren't going to talk about Babysitter's Dead, were you? Well, I have it in my notes. I remember the commercials. I remember this as one of those movies my that, kids, again, I would never see, but I know the commercials for it. My kids really want to see Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Oh, maybe we should talk because, about it. Really? Because they've heard of it. And they asked about it, and so we had to explain it. And I've never seen it entirely. I've seen bits and here and there. So, but you know, you know the premise and the idea of kids being uh, suddenly left alone by themselves because their their babysitter died. Clearly, uh, intrigues them. And all I remember is that the line, "The dishes are done, man." Where he's yeah, like, by that kid who looks like one of the Partridge family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's shooting the dishes. <laughs> Which I think is just a fantastic line. Um, really? Uh, it's, yeah, it's hilarious. He's shooting the dishes with a shotgun, and when they're all destroyed after being told to do the dishes, he sa- turns and says, "The dishes are done, man." That's funny. that kid is an unchecked psychopath and yes. probably currently a member of the NRA, and that is awful. <laughs> this movie looks awful. Well, that's really why funny. I don't want the kids to see it. <laughs> Oh, okay. They enjoy cool. the title. They think the concept is funny, but I, I feel like the movie was awful. Although I believe Christina Applegate gets her act together and ends up being a, a, a contribution to society by the end. Do these kind of movies play in theaters anymore? Like this would be a, a direct-to-video comedy, I feel Yeah, like. maybe. Do you get like kids taking control type of movies anymore? You must, right? But ones that are aimed at older kids, like teenagers are are these like all the movies that have been relegated to like the disney channel like those made for tv movies this now? isn't a disney channel this is something different though because that's is what i'm saying like now today but that's what i'm saying today they've all kind of transitioned to sort of goody goody kids taking over oh maybe so maybe we don't get these i don't know like i feel like you know, Adventures in Babysitting, Weird Science, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, which is something I've never put on a list before, but that's mm. what it feels like. Yeah, they, they, they were definitely kids taking care of themselves sort of movies. Yeah. You know, I, I assume the babysitter is despicable, so when she dies, we don't mourn her loss. Also, I feel like that's a very funny plot device that probably gets discarded very quickly. Similar to what I believe, and I've only seen the second one because my nephew loves it, but in the first Santa Claus... Santa dies, right? Yeah. That's, that's funny. That's how I understand it. That's morbidly funny, and I bet it gets quickly swept away as well. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, do we get that? Do we get a morose, dark... I haven't I haven't seen uh, Santa Claus, but my assumption has always been that... Um, or maybe I've seen this scene or misinterpreted it, but, like, Santa... It, like, Tim Allen is, like, the 40th or 
four hundredth Santa, something like that. It's like he constantly dies, and so that's sort of how it gets pushed aside. Like because... Run Lola Run? Is it like a Run Lola Run film? <laughs> no, but it should be. I'd love to see oh. that. I'm trying to do a Ho Lola Ho joke. It's not working. <laughs> Well, what were you going to say? Because I guess you weren't going to... Oh, you did tell me. You were going to yeah, say City, City Slickers. Slickers. Yes. Which Sydney. is also what you were going to say. That's true. It is first on my notes here, right before Jungle Fever. But um, this movie, <laughs> it's a film about a male midlife crisis. You saw it in the theater, right? I did. You saw this at, at 14, 15, you were struggling with a male midlife crisis? I, well, yeah, this is after When Harry Met Sally, which I was already a fan of. Yeah, by two years. Um, and uh, so I absolutely wanted to see Billy Crystal in some other comedy with Bruno Kirby. Of course. They're together again. That's I'm, true. They are together I'm again. I'm going to watch it. And Carl Grissom from 1989's Batman. Yeah. And Lisa's voice from The Simpsons. Lisa's voice from The Simpsons, pregnant all of a sudden. And a thankless role for Patricia Wetting off of coming off of cancer and 30 something as the wife who kind of gets thrown aside and barely acknowledged through the course of the film do you like city slickers oh yes i do like city slickers in the 21st century i haven't seen like it city in the slickers? 21st century yeah. i have no interest in seeing it in the 21st century i think i would see it again but i haven't seen but i watch city slickers a lot uh, yeah, what was the draw because i saw it a couple times honestly i think i even liked it the first time i used to love <laughs> billy crystal don't think yeah. I do anymore. What, I, what, what, what is it about this movie that's so fondly remembered but never watched? Uh, I don't. I I thought it was hilarious. I've always liked Billy Crystal's <clears throat> character in this, and and when Harry met Sally, they're very similar in that they're making jokes in the movie. You know, they're not like. Oh, I think they're very different. Really, oh, you, this is might be why I don't like City Slickers, oh. or why I like when Harry's Sally. But, but but how are they similar well, to just, you? Well, just that, that that they're well, yeah. I guess Harry's well, yeah. They're both sort of broken and lost, and um, they make jokes and crack wise when they're in uncomfortable situations. And um, it's it's not necessary. It, it's just something. Well, I think like you were saying before, and I've done this too, and maybe it was misguided, where I kind of latched on to these characters that were older, what I thought was what grown up life was supposed to be like. And it was supposed to not necessarily always be happy. You're going to have your unhappy struggling moments, but you could still laugh about things and make people laugh. And I think it's the make people laugh part that I was always drawn to about uh, his movies. At the, I don't the, think that's unhealthy, movies. by the way. I don't think it's unhealthy uh, to, to be drawn to those movies. I just... When Harry Met Sally shows us, with the exception, I guess, like, of the final five minutes, shows us a neurotic man, a man obsessed with death, a man, a broken man, very understandably broken. And that's great. And that's an interesting story. And I'll go back to the City Slickers. What's his problem? <laughs> What's his problem in City Slickers? He's a married man. Does he have kids in this movie? I don't even know. Um, I think he does. I don't think we really uh, see them. I think they're mentioned. But you know what? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He has two male buddies that he's had forever, which I don't think is a realistic situation as I get older. (laughs) Uh, Are are all married and somehow have the ability, the free time, the vacation (laughs) time to go on a bull run in Pamplona. Every year they do some ridiculous thing to stay young. Seems to be the plot of this. So it's a rich people's problem. Sure. And and this year they're going to, to find gold or is that the second one? (laughs) <laughs> that's the second one okay this I, one they're going to move a cow i went to the theater for the second one too i fell asleep about 15 minutes in i literally fell asleep in the movie theater the only during the legend of curly's gold and during the legend of curly's gold and didn't wake up till the credits oh that, that was six bucks that, that i had that experience with wolf with jack nicholson oh and for yeah. part of johnny mnemonic oh, but uh yeah i hate this movie i hate the idea of this you movie. hate it now but you I haven't it seen it in a while. I then? liked it when it came out. I saw it a couple times. I remember everybody loving it and thinking, it's emotional, it's sentimental. Mm. I think like you were saying, people were in love with Billy Crystal. He had a, a, a five-year window where he was making romantic comedies, mostly when Harry met Sally, Forget Paris. Those are the two I can think of. <laughs> but he also made this, which isn't a romantic comedy, but there is something similar to maybe parenthood or, 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 or I'm trying to think what else. It's a dramedy in that yeah. the word that you used on an episode that I agree with. It's a movie that has a lot of jokes, but it's supposed to have some insight into the human spirit. And quite frankly, 
I think that insight is crap. Which is odd, because I think he's supposed to be, what, 42, 43 in this? Our age now. Yeah. So I'd be, maybe I'd be curious to watch it. Like, do you think of this movie ever? Does this movie come to mind? Uh, it you? doesn't pop up. I mean, I guess it, I think of it more than only The Lonely, but um, it doesn't really <laughs> pop up that often. And I honestly, like I'm saying, I haven't seen it. I don't think I've seen it in the 21st century. Um, yeah. And so now, yeah, now that we're talking about it, and now that you've reminded me that we're basically the same age as they are, um, which, by the way, I can't even fathom because yeah. it, in my mind as i watched it they were old men like old like they should have had canes but you old. were relating to them right but in a way i was relating to them yes um and so yeah i'd like to st- i kind of now i want to see it tim yeah. i'm making well, a list maybe. of all the movies we have to see now that we've been reminded and are talking about them you're so, making a list or you have Wikipedia open and you have a list? I am making a new list. Oh, okay. City I can't hear that. Slickers. Can you hear my fan? I turned my fan on. No, that's it's so fine. fucking hot. Oh, is it? Oh, good. I can okay. hear it, but it's totally fine. I understand it's hot there. Thelma and Louise. Hudson Hawk. All right, go ahead. Well, the following week. Coming off of City Slickers, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, and Jungle Fever, which actually, did you see Jungle Fever when that came out? I have never seen Jungle Fever. Do you remember it coming out? I remember it coming out. Jungle Fever? Yeah. Well, that's probably okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's Um, that's the Stevie Wonder song, Jungle Fever. I remember that song. I remember the poster. It was like, uh, it 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 was about an interracial couple. Um, and that poster was was that kind of everywhere. This actually to talk about it for a second. This is one of the first films where I, as a fifteen year old or whatever, knew the director was important. This yeah. is a Spike Lee film. Yeah, and I, it might have been his first one after uh, Do the Right Thing. I'm not positive. And I hadn't seen Do the Right Thing. I have not seen Jungle Fever. I just remember again because of these fucking magazines. Are, and, and are you saying? Tonight. Are you saying you haven't seen Do the Right Thing, or you hadn't at that time? I have not seen Do the Right Thing. But boy, do I talk like I have. Do yeah, the I, Right Thing. That list is long. Um, and this was a movie that just, he was a big name. He is someone who I know more than I know his work. Sure. And he seems very important. And I knew this as a 14-year-old. And honestly, this movie wasn't very accessible in my little town of Connecticut. Sure. I mean, I don't think it was playing a lot. That's that sucks, actually. And we'll get to something later in the summer, another film that I think was accessible and i'm glad that it was but this film it, it was again i think 91 was this year of being of being more aware of behind the scenes and knowing that you know spike lee is a director i've read about him mm. blah 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 so but i didn't see the film and but for some reason that was enough <laughs> it's been enough for me that i can say i know when the movie came out and i saw the poster that's shitty god i'm shitty we had more to say about Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead than we have to say about Jungle Fever. Hey, you know, it, we are who we are. We grew up where we grew up. Coming out of that week was, I think, the first big blockbuster of the summer. I think maybe Backdraft was big. We didn't really say much about Backdraft. But June 14th, and I remember this day well, this was actually the day that my brother graduated from high school, ah. June 14th. And I know this because my brother was valid Victorian or one of the Victorians. He gave a speech. He may not have given them the main one, but he gave one of the three speeches at graduation. He was a school president. He got applause. People love him. He nice. got up there, and during his speech, he acknowledged a movie that was opening that night at graduation that he wanted to see. This movie was a movie he fucking loved. He had the soundtrack. He had the movie adaption novel that he showed me some of the pages of. <laughs> he had a bow and arrow. Yeah. Um, the movie I'm talking about, the movie that he mentioned, the movie that, you know, it was fun. Uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Do you remember this movie? I saw Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves in the theater. Yes. Yes. I saw it with my dad and my brother. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. It felt like Star Wars when we saw it because it was my dad and my brother and myself. We were really into it. I knew it was, I mean, it wasn't that big a deal for me, but I knew it, it was a big movie uh, of that summer, it was talked about, and yeah, the the Brian Adams song was everywhere. Oh, it was we, and we had that soundtrack when it came out on VHS tape. Uh, we got the tape. This was the number two movie of the year, and I have not gone back to see it in like twenty years. 
This is not a movie I've returned to. I can't no. think of the last time I saw it. I think I've seen it twice uh, in the theater and then once, you know, uh, rented. Uh, I saw it a lot because we had the tape. We watched this a lot for a oh, period yeah. of maybe five years. Yeah, we loved this. My dad loved this movie. It was fun. He was down the edge of his seat, so we were on the edge of our seat, so we were almost in the next person's seat. It was just a fun time, and it really did feel, again, like going to see Empire Strikes Back. I like picturing your dad on the edge of uh, edge of his seat watching the movie in the theater. There's that scene where, where Robin Hood shoots the flaming arrow into the guy who's about to chop uh, Christian Slater's head off into his chest. I remember my dad raising his fist and going, yeah, when that happened. <laughs> He was, he was really wrapped up wow. in this movie, and that was fun. That was, was he a, a fun... fan of swashbuckling movies from his youth? I mean, Maybe. was this like a... That's not uh, like I had no interest in those. Robin Hood was never a character that interested me. My brother loved him. He, he loved Hawkeye and the Avengers. Mm. Um, he loved Robin Hood. He liked bow and arrow characters, I guess. But mm. no, Robin Hood, even the Disney movie, it's never been a story that I found interesting or wanted to, to, to see. But I, I did enjoy this movie. And it's weird because this is not a good movie. Yeah, probably not. I don't I think remember, this is a good movie. I remember a controversy of, of Kevin Costner as, as Robin Hood, the casting there. And oh, he I, slips, slips in and out of the accents? Yeah, the accents uh, weren't great. I remember Alan Rickman was applauded for his role. Oh, um, like when people were laughing during his attempted rape scene towards the end? Is that what happens? He kidnaps Maid Marion. He's running up the tower. They're supposed to consummate their loves. Something about getting in charge of... I don't know the whole plot line. Uh But he's pushing on the ground. There's a long shot where he uses his legs to spread her legs. And I remember laughing at this. Oh, my. I remember this theater laughing at this. It was played for laughs. And I think it gets cut out on TV. Because I think, yeah, he's attempting to rape her wow this movie is all over the map i think i get why we don't hear about this anymore hmm. but it was huge at the time and, and i'm looking at it with the current zeitgeist as my guide of reaction because i don't think that scene would fly nowadays or if it did we'd be reading articles about it on the av club and right. sites like that which is good or it would which just, is good the tone of the movie would just have to be different you couldn't have this action fun i kind of remember it being fun movie and then also have this in there that doesn't seem i think we still do i can't think of an example right now i think it still comes up i just think we hear about that scene now and i don't think people were talking about that people loved his performance yeah people praise his hilarious performance in the movie and people liked this movie i don't think critics did but the audience did because it did very well I, i just it's 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 a good thing to talk about, but it's like that's all I have to talk about this movie. Mm. That's that's what's well. Weird. Let me let me. I don't even know if that's genuine. Let me give you I, a genuine thing that I remember from the movie because I don't remember that. Um, I had a big crush on Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio. You said that before. You oh, said that when you talked about the Abyss. Yeah, that's this, why you saw the Abyss. So this is not new news. No, my I brother probably, did as well. I watched the um, Brian Adams "Everything I Do I Do for You" video more than I've seen this movie. Because of this, you know, all of the shots of her in that video. Oh. Yeah. That's sweet. Does she act still? She's still around? I don't know. Are we just not going to talk about the rape thing with Alan? That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's cool. I hope you segue to Dying Young. (laughs) Oh, did that come out this summer? I don't have that in my (laughs) notes. The following week, uh, June 21st. Now, by this point in my life, three years on, June 20-something, in my mind, was always a big date because I have always remembered June 23rd, Batman. 1989, June 23rd is when Batman came out. Mm. And I remember that because I was excited for it, and I continue to remember it because the posters were just most of the comic book emblem and that date. They were selling this comic book image and the drive for the date, and that got everyone ready and excited for it. So two years on, I'm sorry, 1991, two years on, June 21st, they tried to do it again. Mm. This time, another comic book property. This time, a beautifully designed uh, poster, drawn image, very Art Deco looking image. This time with a date, June 21st. And this time for a comic book that I'm going to wager a guess no one knew existed. The Rocketeer. Yeah, I had no idea what that was. Have you seen it, though? Have you ever seen The Rocketeer? I have not. I'll put it on the list. It's a beautifully designed, wonderful-looking, comic book-accurate film that honestly was ahead of its time. I don't think the world was ready for a movie like this. Oh, no? You know, I, I, they weren't I saw ready it on for video. Timothy Dalton? 
He's great. He's fucking he? great in this movie. Jennifer Connelly is good in this movie. They don't give her character much to do. But Timothy Dalton's amazing. The Rocketeer design is 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 dead on comic book representation in an era where they're still struggling to get certain costumes to look right. That's what the drawing looked like. It was directed by Joe Johnston, who went on to direct um, Captain America in 2011. There are similarities, you know. It's a really fun movie. And it probably would have done at least a little better if it came out today, even as it looks now. Like It is just a well-made film that nobody went to. And it was marketed big. There was a huge push for this movie. And I think they thought Batman did well will be this summer's Batman. They had planned a trilogy. They had... Uh, promotional stuff on tv tie-ins one toy but it didn't go anywhere no it's i like now it's it's you can understand a comic book movie failing only because there's a glut of them but it's odd to me to think that we didn't have a comic book era until about 10 years ago because batman had come out in 89 and nothing could follow it up until 2002's uh spider-man you know no yeah. new yeah, that's comic true. book property work and the rocketeer was a fun it's basically indiana jones with a jet pack i mean it's it's and without the arc and not at all like indiana jones it's got nazis in it that's the similarity but it's, it's supposed to be like a movie serial i think and <clears throat> right. i get that from the movie and, and, see, and i haven't that's what i remember of it i remember it being based on movie serials i didn't know there was a comic book about it i don't even think i knew there was a comic book about the racketeer until four minutes ago it's not racketeer it's rocketeer Isn't racketeer that what I, said? I think is a different is the band or horrible i thought band. i said rocketeer the raconteers is that how it's pronounced i have a bit of an accent i guess but i didn't think i said racketeer is that a band the raconteers uh, the raconteurs raconteurs yeah that is okay. a band this movie's rocketeer brendan benson and jack white band is it really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Jack White's in a band now? Well, no, he's not. I don't know if the uh, raconteurs do anything right now. Uh, they would probably have done better today than when they were there. Because the world just wasn't ready for the raconteurs. <laughs> uh, I guess we don't have much to say about the raconteurs. But the Jesus. raconteer, the reason I had no interest in the raconteur is because I didn't... I didn't. I mean, you're talking of it about it like a comic book movie a superhero movie i really never saw that uh, as a superhero movie um i saw that he could put a rocket on his back and fly around and so i saw it more as like a, a serialized kind of adventure movie and i just wasn't interested in it i didn't know there was a history to it i did not know that um I, I've, I've since come to learn that um but i've still not gone back to it isn't that weird that at that time something could come out and you wouldn't know it's pop culture history? I don't know if yeah. that's how things are promoted or just age based. Like I don't know if kids today who go to see Guardians of the Galaxy know it's a comic book, right? Know what where these characters are from, and that's perfectly fine. And they're going to it. I think in the case of the Rocketeer, maybe it was a comic book a lot of people weren't reading, and that's why because that's that at that point in time would not have gotten them into the theater. I guess. Yeah, that seems to make sense. That does make sense. You know what doesn't make sense? As segues go, the following week, <laughs> June 28th. Really? I was very excited for this movie. Okay. I saw this movie in a theater with a friend. It's a sequel yep. to a previous movie that I love. I think I even mentioned it once as one of my favorite comedies of the 80s, unless you, that was yours. One of us No, did. that was yours. That was mine. I think so. so. This is a sequel to it. Mm -hmm. And I think even at the time... 1991 leaving that theater i think this was a time when i felt like i'm laughing because i'm supposed to be laughing oh. not because it's funny not because it hit me as anything new but because well i like this right on june 28th a film came to the theaters called the naked gun two and a half the smell of fear I was wondering if you had another one for that date that you were going to say. Cause, you know, like, no, it's the only movie that, uh, that's been released that week because nobody nobody wanted to compete with it. You know? With the smell of fear. Have you seen this Naked Gun movie? I know I didn't see it in the theater because at that point I didn't have an interest in it, uh, in the Naked Gun movies. Uh, in oh, the theater, okay. I wouldn't pay for that. Yeah, nowadays I, I think I would not. <clears throat> yeah. But at the time, this was a big deal. I, I remember going to see it and I remember, again... Just feeling like I had a responsibility to enjoy it, which I do not. <laughs> I do not. There are a lot of movies this summer that just don't hold up yeah. this far. 
Oh, City Slickers. This. I got to uh, go back and see City Slickers. I can't say it doesn't hold up because I haven't seen it uh, recently enough. <laughs> Something that I have seen recently, and it does hold up. That segue works. Uh, unless you have more you want to say of, of the single no, release. Of, I'm good. Of, we've, of got, we've got two more months of summer to get through. Yeah, we got to blow through this. So why don't we hit what hit me the most in 1991, a movie that... Um, Actually, there's two movies that are coming out on the same day. Uh, July 3rd, big day for sequels. Good counter-programming. Uh, two sequels uh, fighting against each other. Both of which I had seen the predecessor for. One of which I was excited for and saw. The other of which I haven't seen, but I feel like since I saw the first one, I have seen the second one. Uh, but yes, two number twos um, on the same day. Uh, one of which was Problem Child 2. Mm. And then the other, the movie that I so wanted to see in 1991 the, the 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 movie that when i did see i had never seen anything like it before i went to this with my dad and uh and my best friend uh nate um and i mean this movie this is the movie that i got like the making of book i got the screenplay of it when it when, when it eventually came to pay-per-view we rented it at like seven in the morning so i could tape it and i watched it constantly and i think it's because it's a movie that plays on my nuclear f- war fears you know, just as relentlessly as it does, like these action sequences that replicate, like the speeder bike chase and things that I love from Star Wars, Terminator Two, Terminator Two, uh, Judgment Day, which was probably the biggest movie of 1991, and strangely one of the most impactive cinematic experiences that I've ever had. Did you see this in the theater? I did. I saw it in Canada, in the theater. <laughs> is, uh, is that a aspect ratio? Yeah, this this was uh, kind of ground shaking, like changing for me. Yeah. Anyways, in terms of what a movie could do, and yeah, it does absolutely. still hold up. It's very, it's still amazingly paced. It's over two hours, but it doesn't feel that way. Everything yeah. works at the right speed. It's well made. It's really That's good. All. And I've probably seen it. I mean, I've seen this more than I've seen City Slickers for sure in the 21st century. <laughs> similar, similar film. <laughs> but uh, the follow it up. Do you have what else do you have for this month? What what's, what's uh, next Ju- on your well, actually, list? Actually, looking looking through July, it's sort of a light month for me. There aren't mm-hmm. a lot of movies in here that I saw in the theater, and um, some of these I've never seen um, from July until we get later uh, in the month. In fact, uh, July thirty first is the next movie that I know that I saw in the theater that summer. Oh, do you have anything before then? Because there's three movies in July that that are are impacted, or two movies. Well, I mean, there's that a know, hugely that impactive movie. Um, I didn't see it in the theater, but I did eventually see Boys in the Hood that came out. Yes, that July was the one 12. I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. What's your what's your experience with Boys in the Hood? Uh, what it's 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 strange, you know, because it's like I I grew up in upstate New York, um, in a very white small town, um, and so these are the types of issues that I heard of living you know in compton and that sort of stuff i had friends that were getting into west coast rap music nwa um ice t um and so that that's sort of how i kind of approached it it's like this music this culture um and but then when i watched it and saw it was like real like i know it's just a movie but it's a realistic take on what life is like uh in the hood um, so to speak. Um, yeah, it was really, like you're saying, it's sort of like that Thelma and Louise moments where it's like, you're. this is a, a 17, 18, I was probably 18 when I saw it, um, year old kid who grew up sort of sheltered from this sort of stuff and just sort of realizing what the real world is like out there. For yeah, some. no, I, I saw this when it came out. I saw this at a drive-in with my friends and like you were just saying this is an important one because it yeah it opened up the door to like this realization of how isolated a life i was living and i was living in connecticut you can't get more isolated than connecticut and everything in the news at that time was about how dangerous this movie was Mm. and how dangerous the theaters showing it were there had been a riot i think maybe in one theater i think and it spread like it was news and it spread like a weird promotional warning to Connecticuts, at least which is ridiculous but i i mean i thought we were going to see something scathing and honestly i was actually nervous Did you to see go it the see it we saw it in a drive-in oh right, and right as we right. were driving there i i kept thinking like why don't we just go to it in my head i was like what else is playing what else can we see problem child too sure <laughs> i was nervous sitting in a 
drive in parking lot, which is ridiculous. Again, that's just the, 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 the this, this weird white, I guess, culture playing on this idea that this was a dangerous, scary movie. And when it played, you know, it is harrowing. You know, it's a harrowing film. And not because of the audience at the drive-in, but because of the story and because of the fact that I couldn't, I mean, I, I couldn't fully relate to this story, you know, because I, in my isolation, had it pretty good. You know, I had a spoiled yeah. life yeah. compared to the one that was being told. And, and I think that stuck with me. I, I, I mean, again, I was 14, 15, so I didn't know how to process it, you know. You know, I saw it with my friends and we were able to say, hey, we saw it, you know, with all the swearing and the soundtrack. Yeah. You know, there's a part at the beginning about comic books. So I think I was like, oh, I relate to this because I read comic books. But no, I what I got from it is that I have nothing to relate to here right. because my worldview was horrendously limited. And it's not that I've learned to expand it. I don't know, hopefully through experience, because that's all you have. But like you said, like Thelma and Louise, this was this was key and sort of. And again, it didn't open the doors. I wasn't pursuing new music all of a sudden. I wasn't making a point to understand what, 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 you know, the LA rides, which were probably the following year. I didn't make a choice to figure out what they were about. But at least I had this realization that you are so insignificant in this world in terms of your experience. And, and I don't think a lot of films do that anymore. But I think looking over a lifetime when you can pick them out, this is one that I've never gone back to see this again. I've never watched it more than once, but I know that that experience of seeing it was 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 a wake up call that didn't have the immediate follow up that it probably should have. Mm. But it was enough to at least be aware that you need to know that you've got it too good, yeah. <laughs> and it's right. time to get out of that. So yeah, that that hit me harder than the other movie that opened that day, Point Break. Sure, similar to Roadhouse in last year's episode. I've I've never seen it. It's a monster of a film, but I've never seen it. I I don't get what it is with Point Break. Why people love it? Have you seen it? I have is not seen Point seen? Break. Why is that a go-to film? Um, uh, why is it a go-to film? I uh, I will have to watch it to find out. I know it's uh got some interesting characters and some quote it, quotable lines. There's two actors that people know. Yes, but I one think, of whom's in the next movie I want to mention. They, but yeah, that's all. I think they play interesting characters, from what I understand. Uh, and and uh, people quote the movie a lot. I haven't seen it. We should check it out. All right. You know what I did check out, segue-wise, from July 19th? Um, and actually, the movie that, when I think about, like, the 90s, is 1991, but when I think about the 90s, I think this actually might be my favorite film of the 90s. Oh, yeah? Dutch? <laughs> oh, yeah, of Ed O'Neill's oeuvre, it's probably <laughs> Dutch. Did you have a lot you wanted to say about Dutch? I have nothing to say about Dutch. Oh, thank God, I've never seen Dutch. But this movie, <laughs> that's not Dutch, just to be clear, not Dutch. It's not a movie that uh, we've actually talked about, I don't think. I, I, I almost tend to forget how impactive it is. But I saw this in the theater. I saw it without having seen the first one. And I think at the time, we've talked about this before, it was another one of those versus scenarios where it's like, you can like one thing, but you can't like the other. And by this point of 1991, I had seen uh, the movie Wayne's World, mm. you know, and I loved the movie Wayne's World. And I loved the sketches on Saturday Night Live. I thought they were brilliant sketches. So my understanding was you can't like two things. You have to pick one. So I was against when my friend said, let's go to it. I was against going to see uh, Bill and Ted's bogus journey and then we saw it and this movie have you seen it have you seen bill and ted's bogus journey tim let me tell you a deep dark secret about me i have not seen any of the bill and ted's there's only two i have not seen either of the bill and ted's <laughs> i have friends uh in my circle out here that are huge bill and ted fans and uh i just sort of sit quietly as they talk about their excitement for the reunion movie and and anything else and uh yeah if they're listening now which they probably aren't um that is the upside to doing a podcast yeah i have no never, one listens to i've it. never seen the bill and ted's it just when i was when the first one came out i it wasn't something that interested me and so i had obviously no interest in this um but neither did you but you were turned while seeing it, I was. I mean, this movie, this is um, it's basically like almost like Neil Gaiman doing a stoner comedy. 
this was alternative comic books in a way. You know, this was this was kind of like an American tank girl in that it was so in love with its medium, but also poking so many holes in it while somehow this world holds together. They never look at the camera. They never break character. But there are so many things in this movie that should fall apart. And it doesn't. Like, this is a movie that honestly d- does not rip off its, uh, its predecessor at all <laughs> and just manages to maintain its own sort of we did this in our own house kind of ethics. This is a great film that we'll talk. Put that on your list that you're writing. I just did. This, oh, you did? Yeah. Really? Because I didn't hear That's a long title to write. Okay. I heard that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, this, this, was, this is probably my favorite movie of the 90s. This or Clerks, I guess. Oh, but yeah. Probably this. Yeah. Wow. Then we, uh, we should go back to it. Which is odd because I always think Terminator 2 is my favorite movie of 91. But eh. maybe we should do a double feature. And talk about them both. But we've talked about T2. We have. Yeah. You know, we haven't th- talked about. Dutch. It's Dutch. And we will on next week's uh, <laughs> Dutch length commentary with special guest, all the listeners voicing their own opinions on Dutch. No, what's, did you, you had, you had nothing to say about Dutch. We got to wrap this up. Yeah, I got nothing to say about Dutch. To Sorry. Argus. I will stop. That's all right. Uh, shouting oh, no, no, that's, I didn't Dutch. say it for that reason. <laughs> Well, what else? What else hit in July? You said there's something towards the end of July. Uh, you well, you were talking about uh, Naked Gun and how that um, kind of genre was already tiring for you. Um, I still had something that month that I enjoyed, and that was the first Hot Shots movie. exclamation point exclamation point. Um, I I dug that. I I saw that in the theater. That was one of the Friday Friends movie. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I enjoyed that. And I think maybe because it wasn't the same characters and the same jokes, although pro- probably some of the jokes were the same. <laughs> but uh, Would this make your list? No, it's not. I didn't write it down. Nope. Okay. No, sir. Well, you know what you should put on that? I'm ready. <laughs> As go into August, yes. August 2nd. Uh, you should put, um, are you a fan? You like comedy, stand-up comedians, right? <laughs> I, I do. Yeah, you, like, uh, you like dogs? Dogs are nice. Like stand-up comedian dog? I don't know if I've ever in met one. a dog one. movie? Well, I have two dog movies, actually. One of which is a stand-up comedian dog. And the other one of which I know because on the poster, the dog was wearing sunglasses on the poster. But the first one, August 2nd, brought a movie to the theaters that I was aware of and I'm pretty sure never came to Connecticut. Uh, called This, by the way, August is a very dull month oh, yeah. for movies. I mean, there's uh, a great Rover... movie in here, but I didn't see it. And I wasn't even aware of it, likely. The one... You know what? Let's skip River Dangerfield and let's wrap up with that because I think the movie you're going to mention, people love and I hate. So I'm going to just do that. Okay. Why don't we pick August? We'll jump over River Danger- Dangerfield, which was the comedian dog movie. And the we'll and jump over Bingo, which is the dog wearing sunglasses on the movie poster. We'll jump over Double Impact, which is probably my favorite Jean-Claude Van Damme movie because okay. uh, he plays twins. I'll write that one down. Maybe we'll come back to it yeah. another time. Well, because he plays twins, one who's really laid back and one who's really serious. And since he's playing them both, the one who's laid back, like he'll always be wearing like a, uh, a Hawaiian shirt. And then the one who's serious is always wearing um, a ponytail. So that's how you tell them apart. And he headbutts himself. It's, it's, it's a movie. But what's, I'm guessing on this, but are you talking about something that came out on August 14th? I am. What is this film? Well, apparently, it's your least favorite film <laughs> of 1991. Of 1991, the year that Bingo, a dog wearing sunglasses on the movie poster, came out. The commitments. Yeah. You don't like the commitments. Nor do I like its follow-up soundtrack. More co- of the commitments. <laughs> no, I don't. And again, maybe not the movie's fault. I don't like the big guy who sings drunk at the wedding. I forget what his Shh. name is. Yeah, I forget but his I name too. He, I think he sings Try Lieutenant. Uh-huh. I don't like how much people love this fucking movie. Oh my goodness. This is an, this is like a a film version of Radiohead to you. Well, <laughs> or ha, have you seen the movie and do you think it's a bad movie or you don't like that so many people absolutely love this movie? I think it meshes. I saw the movie with you on VHS tape. I probably was that our? I don't know if that was our first time. I had probably seen it already and was probably showing it to you. Did you have the soundtrack? I I probably d- did. I didn't have the second soundtrack. Did more of the commitments. I did not. I did not get maybe, that. That's what it's called. Yeah. Okay. Because well, I didn't that's like. Fine. Because I I read I read right through that because they actually had the the manager 
uh, character who didn't sing in the movie singing on some songs in that second soundtrack and it's just a cash grab and it's like no this isn't what the movie was about so i'm not going to invest what's the movie about well the movie is about about people singing soul music about it's a movie about um kids in ireland uh who they're adults right no they're 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 they're, they're, they're 20s they're in their 20s really yeah they seem so old in my memory you think so i think they're in their yeah, 20s the drunk guy at the wedding i thought he was so much older plus these, scenes of this these get are guys that, with that, train spot that are out of school can't get a job don't have a purpose in their lives they all happen to have some musical talent and uh this other guy the main storyteller the the lead guy uh who can't really play an instrument or sing but understands the power of music, wants to put a band together. Does he interview himself in the bathtub? He does. Just, into t- yeah. See, this is why I don't like the movie. I could relate to that. Uh-huh. The movie starts off with him talk, interviewing himself in a little handheld tape recorder while sitting in the bathtub. And I do remember that scene. I always think it's in train spotting, like I was saying, but it's in this. I remember that fucking scene thinking, oh, okay, I get this. I do this. Interv- the idea of interviewing yourself like you're this celebrity. Like, I get that. And then from that point on, nothing in this movie stuck with me. I found it dor- boring. I found the music awful and the characters just dull. And everybody fucking loved this. They loved it. I love the movie. I love the movie a lot. It's a great movie. I like the idea of these down on their luck folks pulling themselves together. Um, none of them really mesh. They don't go well together. There is the drunk guy at the wedding who nobody really yeah. likes. Nobody likes him. You don't like him. You're not supposed to like him. People love that character. The, the, Audience I, members love that character. That's I don't the, like the insane. character. I think he's got a no? great voice. I think he sings well, but he's a terrible person. And he's a terrible they character. Tore, they tore. I think they did. Band, I think they? I think they kind of tried to play off the popularity of it more than they should have. They didn't need to be a real band. Uh, I just I don't think I like these kind of movies. I don't like the let's put on a show mentality movies. Which it's is not weird, let's put on a show. It's let's like he really wanted to form a band that would make a difference that would 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 bring not just themselves out of the rut of their lives, but their community out of the rut of their lives. And but for do a, they do they uh, for a brief the for a brief two month period or however long they did this three months? It's hard to tell in the timeline. They got there and they actually built themselves into a real band and and got to a point where um, the actors they did were, or the characters the did? characters in the movie the story oh, in the okay. movie. Um, and they were putting on a great show, and Ugh. people were responding, and the press was starting to respond, and then it all implodes, just because yeah. that's what happens sometimes, and it's a great movie. Is it based on a book? I think it is, yes. Is it the guy who wrote Snapper Carl, Carl or whatever that's called? <laughs> the Snapper? Yes, The Snapper. Is it yes. the guy who wrote The Snapper? Yes, The Snapper, I think, is like an unofficial sequel or something. Cause so Cole, you did know that. When, when you said me. you think it's a book. Cole Meany wrote it? No, Cole Meany is the dad. I think the snapper is the sister of... Is he on Star Trek Next Generation? He is. Who does he play? What's that character's name? I don't know. Uh, Lieutenant, it's like O'Brien. Lieutenant. I think it's like... It's, it's <laughs> Lieutenant Irishman, I think. <laughs> Lieutenant Irishman, yep. Like, he never had an action figure. I don't know. And he's not in any of the movies, but I know he exists. I don't Colm. know. Colm? Colm? C-O-L-M, right? I think. Meany, like Kevin Meany. Uh, Cole yeah. Meany. So it sounds like one word. Colmini. Colmini. Sounds like, it's like that's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, it's like a you know venereal disease. I've got Colmini. But I think there were one or two books, and the snapper was about the sister, and the commitments was about the brother. And in the movies, the reason I know that they're connected is because Colmini is the dad to both of them in both movies. He's like the So one. the movies are in the same universe. They're in the same universe, yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I think. I think so. We'll have to look it up. We'll do a wiki leaks on that and figure it out for real. I don't think we're good. Uh, wiki tweaks. Yeah, wiki tweaks. And I don't think we're. <laughs> no, we're we, not. They've done a wiki leaks. That's a oh, real thing. That is a real thing. And that did not go well for him, even though it's useful, useful knowledge. Well, I'm glad you're back. I yeah. don't know if this episode showed that. I think it did. <laughs> I think. I think. Uh, I think it's four hour runtime probably uh, uh, showed that I have in fact returned. 
Well, good. We'll whittle it down, but good. Um, thank you for returning to this 20th Century Popcast, and thank you, the listener, for staying with this. You're probably very happy that Bob's back, right? I would be. I am. Actually, I'm not a listener. I'm in the show, but I'm glad you're here. But if you're glad we're here as a listener and you want to hear more or support us, uh, visit 20popcast.com. That's our main website. It always has the most recent episode up there on the front page streaming, as well as links to all of our past uh, episodes. I think I said issues. I meant to say episodes. Uh, you can also subscribe to the show there on either Apple Podcast, Stitcher, or however it is you get your podcasts to your ears. Um, so check us out there. Uh, you can also follow me. There's links to follow me on Twitter at Subcultist, as well as Instagram at Subcultist. Bob, what would you like to say here in the closing moments? You can follow me at uh, at RH Canning on Twitter as well. Um, yeah, do reach out as Tim is saying. Let us know your thoughts. Um, I'm curious to see what movies from 1991 we might not have even mentioned that you want to talk about. What did we miss? What was your big experience, summer movie right. experience that year? Was it maybe a movie where there's a dog wearing sunglasses on the movie poster? Because that movie is called Geo. We'd like to know. We'd like to know. Well, thanks, Bob. I'm glad you're back. Next week will be more interesting. As maybe? interesting. As, well, hopefully more interesting. <laughs> maybe as interesting. Uh, but yes, uh, that's that's what we sound like now. Dutch! Alright, so let's go. I'm going to keep my notes open and you... I can send you that Wikipedia link if your browser shuts. I've already got it. Okay. So it is Wikipedia. Son of a fucking... It's just helping me with the titles. I have the memories. I know the stories. I bet you were the best when you had to do projects together in school prior to Wikipedia. (laughs) Because all you had was a library. And really, if you were sitting there with the library, I would be impressed. But you're not. You're sitting there with a screen open. The new library. Ready? Ready. Do you want to open the show since you've no. been gone? No, you don't. Okay. Do you want to do the show? I yes. guess would be like, okay. Yes. Well, that's, that's good. All right.